Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. It's 1043, and it's Monday. Today is January 7th, the year of our Lord, 2019. I hope you will. You got a chance to pray. I hope you just thanked Him for being so good to you. We had food on our table this morning. We woke up in the comfort of our own home. We were able to get up, start our day. But before starting our day, we were able to kneel before our Maker. And if you're like me, that's the time that you tell Him what's on your mind. Sometimes the night before, I'm so tired and worn out and googly minded that I fail to just remember all the stuff that's happening and then when I do remember and, and tell him I just can't pick up on that uh, on his calling on his word on his on his voice his still small voice well I got up this morning and I was able to talk to him, reckon with him, and I've got something to tell you. It's comical. <gasps> Is it comical? It's funny. But it wasn't funny yesterday. Not at all. But before I tell you, I'm going to pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I thank you for being my father. My Heavenly Father, I thank you for walking with me, talking with me, blessing me and mine. I thank you, Father God, for the gifts that you've given and the Holy Spirit, Father God, that guides us and leads us. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You're so good. You're so precious. And the fact that I can come before your throne of grace and we can reason together and talk. And I can tell you about stuff. Oh, God, what a blessing. Lord, I don't have to call the psychiatrist. Uh -uh. I don't have to call the doctor. I don't have to call the lawyer or the Indian chief. I don't have to call my mother. Of course, you know, Lord Jesus, she's with you. I don't have to call my best friend. I can't even, Father God, explain it to my husband, but I can talk to you, the lover of my soul, and the peace of God that surpasses understanding comes back and rests in my bosom, and I know it's all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, bless us today as we open your word and talk about it and talk about Samuel and Saul and Hannah and David. Thank you, Father God, for the rich legacy of the word that keeps us stable. We ask these and all of the blessings in Jesus' name. Well, saints, yesterday was Sunday, right? Well, Mother Gail says she's going to paint the building with the leaks and the cracks and the different things. You know how you get all dolled up and you... Sometimes we uh, pay a little bit too much attention to the outer man. Yep. Have you ever done that? Get caught up in self. Self oh, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to fix that, I'm a, I don't look that great, this, oh, that looks better on TV, maybe if I put it on me. Oh, let me tell you what I do. Gail kind of got caught up in television. So, as she usually does, she gives herself a haircut. 
I've learned to take a vitamin and to strengthen my nails, which I always wanted all my life. God has helped me to uh, not bite them because I used to pay money to get them done. So now I have this uh, blessing that strengthens my nails and uh, they grow and I can polish them and be kind of happy with that. But then the hair thing. At one point I was buying too many wigs and nothing seemed to satisfy. So I said, okay, I'll dye the gray that's there. I'll get it all to conform and use a color to dye it gray. So I did that. Look cute for a while. And then it started turning green and I used another kind of color and it turned purple and lilac and violet and, and then the roots came out orange. <laughs> Hallelujah. But last week I said to myself, oh, I, I got the color right. I, I put a little, you know, lightener in it and took all the color out and then put the gray in it. And it looked nice for a minute. And then Gail said, okay, now give yourself a little trim, a shape up. Hmm. Sometimes I can do it and sometimes I can't. Well, this weekend I didn't do it well. And I had to go to church with a hat on. And uh, Mother went to church with the hat on. And the white suit as a uh, uniformed and uh, tried to wear some white shoes. Uh, I said, oh, later for it. Lord, I don't care no more. I'm going to put this hat on my head. Ain't nobody going to see what's under the hat. Well, child, I went to church. And mother, the lady, uh, uh, our, our leader of the mother's uh, organization, which happens to be Mother Martha Hat. Uh, Adams, I love her so. Well, she tells us, Gail, you can't sit here with the hat on. You can't, you can't wear that hat. Hallelujah. Gail had to remove the hat. I had uh, showed my girlfriend in the, while we were in Sunday school what had happened to me. You know, I had a hair day. And she said, oh, you look like a skint chicken. <laughs> and I did. <sighs> the trick of the enemy. Children, that's why we're going to talk about what God says. Thank God he looks at the heart. <sighs> well, anyway, I'll tell you what I did. I went to church. And I was asked to remove the hat. And I had to sit with the mothers because I'm going to be faithful to where I am and who I am. I'm a mother. So I sat with the mothers with my skin chicken head. And I knew. Not only was there were looks, and I swore them. You know how you see things out of the corner of your eye. And I was fighting within and fighting without and trying to stay in God's presence. Well, I did. But it tormented me that I should get busted. Serve me right. I should have gone and had the thing done professional or just took the time and thrown on a wig when I make mistakes like that I just hate to give the barber all my money what we're going to talk about today is the outer man the outer appearance how we are judged by others and while I was at church I saw the looks and the, the smiles and hey if I had seen me I would have laughed too but ain't nothing I could do. I had done it to myself. A skint chicken. 
as you can see today I have some hair <sighs> and I'll keep it on until it grows back out but uh, the devil tries to use even you to destroy what is said through the word destroy the joy of the Lord destroy your peace he can work in you he can work in the outer man if we let it to destroy your peace I got a workout yesterday mm -hmm. I bet you I'm stronger for it because I ignored whatever was looking at me strange put that hat on at the end of the service couldn't wait till Mother Adams left the building to put my hat back on. God bless you. I just wanted to tell you that story because I thought it was so funny and I didn't take a picture thank you Jesus but I did look like a skint chicken in a white suit and I got a song to sing. It just came to me this morning. It goes like this. Lord, I just want to thank you. 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 I want to thank you for being so good to me, so good to me. Lord, I just want to praise you. 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 I want to praise you for being so good to me, so good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The joy that I have, the world can't take it. And you know what's in this world, this here, this here. Let's talk about it. We are going to look at the scripture as uh, read in 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. And it talks about, excuse me, talks about, uh, let's see, who does he talk about? Talks about 1 Samuel 16 talks about the appointment of David. You remember Samuel, don't you? Well, Samuel was a, he was a judge. He was a prophet, and Samuel was a priest. Samuel's mother's name was Hannah, and Hannah was married. Uh, he, the husband, also had married another uh, woman, Penuel, or something like that, and. She was able to have children, but uh, Hannah couldn't have them. And one day Hannah goes to the synagogue and she tells uh, the Lord on her knees. She, she's so distraught. She gets on her knees and tells the Lord, Lord, I want a male child. 
and she's on her knees in earnestness and praying and she's crying and she's praying with such earnestness that the uh, the priest at that time the the head of the uh, temple accuses her of being drunk now she's praying and he accusing you know just broken heart and he accuses her of being drunk and she tells him I'm not drunk I, I can't have children and I'm earnestly praying about it. Hannah's husband, by the way, was Elkanah. And, and Hannah was very, very distraught about not having the babies. You know, not having, because the other wife, Penina, was having sons and daughters. Uh, Elkanah loved Penina, but he also loved Hannah, and, and he would give her even more because Penina had her children, but Hannah was so sad about not having children. Eli was the prophet at that time, the keeper at the temple, and he accused her of, of being drunk because he saw her lips moving, but her voice wasn't heard. She was in deep despair and deep prayer. Eli, uh, she explains to Eli that uh, I'm deep, deeply troubled, Eli. I've not been drinking. And I'm not a wicked woman. I'm praying here because I'm in grief. So Eli understands and he tells her, woman, go in uh, peace and God, uh, the God of Israel will answer your prayer. Early the next morning they rose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home in Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. In the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named her son Samuel. And that's where our story begins. I want to read from the 21st Verse 2, let's see, what does it tell us? It tells us to read to the 26th. So, that's what I'm going to put on this screen. Samuel, 1 Samuel, 1st chapter, 21st verse, to the 26th. And if you have it, in the midst, or you can pull it up on your phone, do so. Read it along with me. I'm reading out of the New International Version. If you can, read it with me. If you cannot, don't worry about it. Just listen. This is a story of great importance concerning our outer appearance. starting on verse 21. It says, When her husband Elkanah went up with all of his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I'll take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband Elkanah told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After she had weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord. As surely as you live, I'm the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked for. So now I give him to you. I give him to you to raise in this house of God 
for the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. And thus, we have the reading of the book uh, of 1 Samuel, verses 21 to 20, 28. Did you not know that Samuel began to grow and to be taught of God and the ordinances that uh, were to be kept by the priests in the temple? Samuel uh, awakes as a young boy and um, the prophet Eli trains Samuel. He's trained him in the ways of the you know the prophets and and what a prophet does what a priest does in the house of God and the ordinances and the word of God he's he's trained by the best Samuel grows becomes a young man and one night he hears the Lord Samuel so Samuel gets up and he goes to Eli um yes my lord Samuel said I didn't call you Go back to bed. Samuel goes back to his room and lays down. And God calls him again, Samuel. Samuel gets up, goes to Eli. Yes, Eli, you called me. Eli says, no, I didn't call you. But the next time you are called, answer, say yes, Lord. See, God had a special calling for Samuel. And if we listen, we'll hear God's special call on our lives. The Lord talks. He talks to us every day. He's close. He's inside of us now. He's no longer hovering around us. We've invited him in. He's part of our lives, part of our being. We're body, soul, and spirit. Well, anyway, Samuel goes back to his bed, lays down, and he hears a voice again. Samuel. And this time he says, yes, Lord, I hear you. He becomes prolific in listening and hearing the voice of God. He gets a special anointing. Samuel becomes well known. Samuel is that prophet that anoints Saul over the children of Israel when, when they were in their worst. They were scattered. They were being tormented by those around them. The Amorites, the Hittites, the, uh, the Canaanites. Remember, they were to go into the land and, and uh, uh, to, to have dominion and to destroy those and not take up, don't intermarry with those around them. But Israel had uh, forgotten what God told them. There are some special things about God's calling. God's calling. Hmm. Isn't it nice how he doesn't look at the outside of us like man does? Man will look at your outer side, outside of you, see a booger on your nose, and not tell you. 
sometimes, and I'm guilty too, I'll see a woman with the wrong shade of makeup and say to myself, Ooh. or you'll see me looking like a skint chicken and not say, what's wrong? What did you do? But that's okay. Thank God for his visual you know, he looks at the heart. And he looked at the heart of uh, Saul and had Samuel appoint him as king. Samuel means heard by God. He was Israel's last judge. He was their uh, priest and prophet. See, because uh, before the kings came, because Israel wanted uh, leaders uh, like the people around them, they wanted a king, they wanted a president. So they uh, chose judges. The Lord cho chose judges for them. But before that, uh, after that, the Lord appointed uh, kings. So he appointed uh, King Saul. Saul was, uh, you know, he was, he was he's tall and handsome and, and, and uh, came from good upbringing. And um, Saul was a warrior. And he had military skills and uh, the people liked him. Uh, he, he got that nation up on their feet. Because they were in disarray. They were separate and they weren't following after the ordinances of God. And, and they had forsaken who they were and, and, and the gods of their fathers, whom God had promised, whom they had promised they would never forget. Um, he had military skills and... Uh, he helped Israel regain power. But Saul became self-willed. You know, self-willed when we want to do things our way. And uh, I think he, he did something in the temple he shouldn't have done. You read it. Read it. Well, God told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. And Jesse, you know, he didn't know much about Jesse. All he knew is that God had told him to go to the house of Jesse. Jesse was a well-off uh, uh, man. He was well-off. He had uh, some coins and he had, uh, you know, he had, he had sons. He had eight sons. And um, Samuel was kind of, uh, how would you say, leery about going to the house of Jesse to appoint, anoint a king because Jess, um, Saul was still in office. And that would be, you know, that would really cause trouble, not only to Jesse and his family, but also to the prophet Samuel, because that's tyranny. I mean, you're coming against your leader. You're appointing a new leader, and your, your old leader hasn't even uh, left office yet. You could get yourself hurt. Get yourself killed and, and get the family killed. But Samuel... In obedience to God, goes and uh, to Jesse's house and uh, sees all of his sons. Tells Jesse that uh, we're going to have a feast after I anoint. God has sent me here to anoint one of your sons, and we're going to have a feast. And the nice thing about Jesse, Jesse didn't come empty-handed. 
Uh, I was always told when you go to somebody's house, bring something with you. Bring something with you. Don't go, just go visit and, and, and uh, you know, just come on in and sit down. Bring something with you. That's um, being cordial. That's being respectful. Throw a gift in the door before you go. And if your gift is received, you're going to be okay. If not, hey, at least you know, bring a gift. Well, Samuel is well known. And even the priest, before he went to Jesse's house, the priest of the temple of God shuddered, knowing that this big time minister, this prophet is coming to their town. To Jesse's house. All of Jesse's sons passed before the prophet. And the prophet, uh, they're good looking, they're tall, they're handsome, but uh, they're not what God had given him to anoint. Neither of them. Samuel tells Jesse that his sons were to sanctify themselves and then come and have a feast with him. So they did. Seven sons passed before the prophet. And Samuel observed each one of them. But none of them appealed to Samuel. God had a specific set of circumstances and a specific person he would anoint to be the next king over Israel. And Samuel mourned for Saul. But God told him, stop mourning for him. Don't feel sorry for him. Leave him alone. Don't, don't. But he is no longer, I will not uh, uh, be with him. See, when, when uh, Samuel an anointed Saul, Saul to be king over Israel, Saul was given the mind of a leader. God gives that. That's not given to everyone. But when Saul took it upon himself to disobey God, the mind, the leadership mind ceased and, and Saul was given over to his own ideas. And we know, when we get our own ideas, how that works out. Well, David is sent for. Now it took some time, because Samuel said he wouldn't rest until, he would not rest to have a feast or anything else until the right uh, person passed before him. David is sent for. David is the keeper of the family sheep. Now, sheep aren't the cleanest. They don't give off the best odors. And they're not the wisest of animals. It's a humbling job. In humility, David comes before the priest, Samuel. And the Lord said to Samuel, Arise and anoint this child. Mind you, David is still a child. The words come uh, in the Bible, 1 Samuel 16, 12, and so on. The word ruddy. David is described as a ruddy young man. That's a person having a healthy red color. Might have even had red hair. Who knows? He's a cheerful uh, with a man with a ruddy complexion. Pink, glowing, reddish, the word says. Pinkish. He's high-colored, blushing, red-faced. 
flaming, feverish. He's rosy. He is rubescent. And he gets anointed. The Bible also talks about his countenance, his face, his facial expression. It says that he was good to look at. He didn't scowl. He didn't look pretentious. He didn't look mischievous. We'd be surprised what, what the facial expressions. He was, he had a facial expression that was easy to look upon. He was goodly to look at. He was pleasant looking. Why would the Lord anoint a shepherd boy? Why would the Lord anoint somebody like you or me? Could it be that the Lord knows our hearts? He knows what you're going to do even before you do? Could it be that the Lord has plans for us? Yes, He does. Yes, He does. That's why I want to praise Him and thank Him. When the enemy would say to you and I, Oh, you look like a fool now. You look crazy. And you've been busted. And you thought you was cute. And you did this and that. <laughs> you can look deep down within. And start praising him and, and, and look at his word. If it's not in here, his word will guide you through that because the enemy will talk to you, you know. He'll bombard you with ideas about the outer man. As our outer man grows older and the inner man increases daily, Draw an eye to him. Read his word. Because you never know when you might be caught off guard. And bombardment, like I had yesterday, just a bombardment of thoughts. But you cannot destroy what God has blessed and anointed. That's why I love him. That's why I love him. He's my God and he's my king. And fight this good fight of faith because it's a good fight. He's got good things for us, you know. Good plans. And it has nothing to do with the outer man. It's the heart. Man looks at the outer appearance. Appearance. I look at my outer appearance, but God looks at my heart. So what should I do? Keep this heart right before God. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Watch as well as pray. Lord created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Right spirit, because sometimes the spirit can get caught up in Okay? Thank God for a good father. I love you. God bless you. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. I like looking nice. But sometimes I can mess it up. So in that case, this thing here. Keep that ticking and keep that doing right. God bless you and keep you. I'm just passing through just in case.